Hey, what's up guys? I'm Harry Torn and welcome back to Knights of Honor Sovereign. So in today's episode, the first thing we're going to do is try to arrange a marriage for our son and heir, Prince Conan. So I took a look around the map to see what princesses were available and just looked at their stats uh, because those are important. Their stats will be uh, contributed to their, their husband. Uh, so with Prince Conan, he would get two points of her diplomacy and, and one point of the espionage and he can't use both of those points with the diplomacy but the other two are good and really this is kind of the the best option princess fiorenza and so we're going to see if he'll be willing to agree with uh, this marriage i think probably not considering the fact that our relations are just neutral and uh, we don't exactly have much influence with them either so they're probably going to decline but we can try this out he says, I shall not give my daughter in marriage as I fear that one day when I'm gone, the relations of our kingdom might be ruined in inheritance disputes. Hopefully that does not offend you, King Henry. Okay, so that's a no. There are a few other options. Uh, Denmark has a princess. Her stats would not be as useful. Uh, we could use those two points in religion, but not the third one or the military point, but yeah, we can try. So let's go ahead and do a royal marriage here. Again, though, a little bit more influence, but not much. So yeah, that's also a no. And then Poland has a princess. And she's probably the worst of the ones I found here. But we can uh, try for her as well. I'm thinking they're all going to decline because you just don't have high enough relations or influence. And that's one of the nice things about having influence is it makes it far more likely that people are going to accept your, your marriage proposals. Now, keep in mind that they do have to be a juvenile or older for you to arrange a marriage with them. Uh, there are no betrothals between children where you know they get married once they're old enough. That's something you can do in the CK series, but is not an option in this one. So you do kind of got to watch uh, the foreign courts quite a bit to make sure that as soon as these princesses are becoming juvenile and are available for marriage, that you make an offer because later in the game, once there's less countries, I do find that it can be very difficult sometimes to find a marriage for all of your sons, uh, even just your, your heir sometimes. Now, supposedly when your king's not married, there's supposed to be like an event that might fire that will uh, result in your king like marrying a local noblewoman and so that they can still be married and, and then have children. Uh, but I've never actually had that happen because I've always been able to eventually find somebody to arrange a marriage with. Uh, so I can't really say how long that takes or how reliable that is. Uh, now, one reason why you want to arrange a marriage for your heir before he becomes the king is because if he's married when he comes to the throne, then there's a chance that he'll have children born to him uh, because there is no representation of the majority of the family. So you won't be able to see your grandchildren. There's no real family tree outside of what you have here. So you have your, your children, your spouse, their spouses and then the important relatives those are essentially like your your brothers uh, when you come to the throne uh, the brothers will become important relatives any brothers that you have so the dynasty system the family tree uh, is not as in-depth as what you'll see in in the CK series so what I'm thinking we're gonna have to do is trying to improve relations with Genoa our first choice just to see if we can get them to agree to a marriage here uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's go ahead and send our diplomat to do that. That will cost money, which is why I haven't been doing it now. But uh, clearly, it's something we want to do. So he'll get that started. And we'll see if just improving relations will be enough. Uh, next thing we're going to do is I wanted to start some construction. Uh, we're actually going to start building here in Winchester. We're going to get the woodworking. So the woodworking gives you hammers and uh, cheaper building costs. So that's really what it it does is it makes building faster and cheaper. Uh, and because we want to get a lot of stuff here, like the goldsmithing, which is really expensive, it would be helpful to reduce the cost here. And we don't have access to, to timber or any other goods that you get from the woodworking. So might as well get it here. So we'll build that. And that's all the money we have, unfortunately. So remember, we're saving up books to continue to upgrade Baron John, and we're also uh, upgrading the swordsmiths. And then we're gonna build those two once we have this done here. We can speed this up. Okay, so they finished up their war here. Now you notice that there's stripes. That means that this province is not really fully integrated yet. 
We'll see that once we conquer territory of our own. I'll show you guys how that works. So our diplomat has arrived in Genoa. They're going to start increasing relations there. We have completed an upgrade. So we finished the swordsmith. So let's go ahead and get these two light infantry hired. And then we are ready to declare war right as they have finished up their own war. Uh, which means that they're probably going to have some war exhaustion still. And, uh, you know, they, they depleted some of their population in that war as well. So we should have a nice advantage at the start of this. But again, I would not be surprised if this does spiral into a larger conflict, which is why we're already uh, going to be start building up a, a second army. So let's go and declare war here. Our opinion with the clergy has taken and loss. one thing to think about war is that there are some other negatives associated to, with it. Uh, basically, the opinion of some of these social classes uh, is going to be reduced. So we'll see that with the clergy. And that dropped pretty heavy, so we went from seven down to two. Uh, the peasants, because they're the ones that are going to be expected to, to fight this war to some degree. Uh, also, we're going to have relations decline with anybody who likes them. And relations are going to improve with anybody who doesn't like them. So war does have some cost to it. You know, reducing opinion with other countries and reducing the opinion of your social classes, and thus you're not going to get as many bonuses. And so staying at peace for so long did have some advantages for us. All right, so this is our first conflict. We're going to be moving our armies into their territory, and then we're going to start building up this army as well. Uh, we do have the levies for it. The barracks are already constructed, and they automatically have all those upgrades. So we can go ahead and start building these troops up now. But you notice that we don't have that many workers here, so we'll only be able to get so many, uh, so many units. So let's go with the light cab, and it looks like that's all the money we currently have. All right, so we'll just wait to get anything else. And he's just going to be staying there anyways. All right, we're actually going to slow this down a little bit while we're at war. And we'll have to see where his army is located. I assume it's still down here, so he might invade this way. But there's a high chance that he's going to react to our invasion here. Now, there's a couple things to consider when you're doing the invasion. When it comes to the defense here, if they have any castles, it can sometimes be wise to take out the castle first. And I'm not seeing any castles anywhere in their territory here. You could just check it this way as well, which would be a little quicker. So no castles to worry about. And you don't have to take them out. Uh, but the castle does increase the, basically what I'd call like the attrition that you have here. Uh, that's reducing your morale. Uh, so we're, we're losing five right now because we're on enemy soil. If there was a castle here, that would be reduced even further. So there's that advantage. And also, it I believe it increases the, the defensiveness of a province. Now, we probably don't want to go after this province just yet. Until we have fought and destroyed their military. And I'm assuming that's down here. So we're going to march over there now. Uh, we did establish trade with Castile, if you remember why I sent that off last episode after we had this guy sitting here for an entire video and part of the, the first episode, getting paid and doing nothing. So there's his army. And so we're going to be doing a battle here. So let's just see what he's currently got. It's all archers. Okay. So hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult of a conflict then. All right, so this will be our first battle, and there's two ways to do this. So we can simulate the battle, say all in, order your troops to engage the enemy. You will observe the battle in simulated form. Uh, basically, they'll just be doing little attack animations on here, and the battle will be simulated. Uh, one negative with doing that, uh, besides the fact that you're not going to directly control your troops, so you can't really you know, help determine who wins this battle at all, besides what you did before the battle, you know, your troop compositions and, and uh, traits and all that kind of stuff, which we should have leveled this guy up real quick before we actually do this. So we're going to level his siege craft up. It's not going to help us in this particular battle, I don't think. No, it's not going to help us in this battle, but yeah, let's go ahead and do that just so I don't forget. But yeah, you can't really, you know, obviously have any role in it. And the other thing to consider is that it takes time. Uh, it actually, you have to like unpause the game and just let it progress. And it's really, really slow. It takes a long time for these battles to finish up, uh, which gives a lot of time for the enemy to bring more troops, uh, get them involved. And uh, again, it just takes a long time. So 
The best way to do it is to lead your own troops. Uh, you'll have you know direct control of those units, and it'll be quicker. Now there is like a a mechanic that allows the uh, enemy or or yourself to bring more troops into the fight, even though technically the campaign map is paused. Uh, if they would get there within the time it would take for the battle to complete, uh, then they'll they'll still arrive uh, in the battle. But sometimes that can actually be good, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, we don't need to go into it now. But we'll be leading our own troops in this, and this will bring us into the the 3D tactical battle map uh, that will be very similar to uh, the Total War series, if you've ever played that. Uh, there is a little kind of cutscene that happens right here in the beginning, just showing you the situation. Here is our enemy. Our men can capture these points to secure a swift victory. Our marshal has placed our armies here. So there's three ways to win a battle. The first is to basically kill all the enemy men or make them retreat. And you don't have to chase them down uh, as you do in Total War, where running them down and killing them will ensure that you don't have to fight as many troops in the next battle. And this game, it seems to me that armies are completely destroyed when they are defeated, not when they retreat, which there's a button right up here to retreat. Uh, but when you're completely defeated uh, in the battle, uh, the army is completely wiped out regardless of how many men might have uh, routed and, and actually got off the map. So you don't have to chase them down. Uh, it'll end once all enemy troops are either uh, wiped out or running away. So that's the first way, uh, the more traditional way, just you know, defeat the enemy army. Uh, you can also kill the enemy commander. If the enemy commander dies, then you win the battle. Each knight has one of these elite heavy cavalry units, the nobleman cavalry, that are currently escorting them around and are pretty good in battle uh, if you use them correctly. Uh, so if you kill the, uh, the commander here, then that will result in you winning the battle. And the third and final way to win is to take all of the victory points. So the number of them, I think, depends on how many troops they have because it's often a different number of victory points. Like in a small battle, you'll see like just two or three. So in this case, we have five victory points. Uh, three of them are ours, and that's these little camps here. So that's two, three. So they have their camps as well. And so if you take all the victory points, you'll win the battle that way. So several options for you to defeat the enemy. So let's just take a look at their forces. So they're over here uh, currently protecting their camp. They have all archers, guys. Nothing but. So those can do a lot of damage, but, uh, you know, we should be able to easily uh, wipe them out. Because once we get into melee, they're going to they're gonna run quite quickly. And so it's really just his heavy cavalry that we have to worry about. Let's go and dip back over to our own troops. And yeah, we don't need any of these tips on here. So we're going to uh, hop on over to our own troops, see how they are laid out. This is probably fine. We have our light infantry here. We have our light spear right here. The archers are behind them. I suppose we could uh, get them all selected here and maybe get them a little closer behind our troops here. And then we have the cab on the flanks. And we'll bring, bring our general up here. And so I assume we're the ones that are going to have to march up against them, or maybe they'll be moving. Yeah, we're probably going to have to attack them since this is, you know, we're the one on the offensive here. And we also would like to get a little bit further away from our camps, so they'll have to, to march further in order to start taking these camps from us. And one thing I often see is that the AI is pretty good about going after these camps. Uh, if you leave them open, they will go after them. Uh, particularly if they're going to lose the battle, uh, they'll sweep behind with a, a cavalry unit and try and take your, your camps over. So you don't have to leave anybody here to protect them, but you do need to keep that in mind so that they're going to uh, to go after those. So we'll let this guy get in place here. And then we're going to move our entire army. Oh, it looks like they're coming after us. All right, well, we'll move them. We'll move them up a little bit. We're just going to move them like right. How far can we get here? 
They're right here. We're on our way. So move those up there, and then we'll get all of our archers selected. Move them behind them. And then the cab, they're going to be covering the flanks, but they're probably going to be trying to charge up behind them. And then with our uh, marshal here, I think we're going to go after their camps. Probably won't be necessary. But I always like employing this optional strategy here. If it ends the battle sooner, then who cares? Because they all die regardless. Alright, so I might have moved them up a little bit too far. But we're going to be charging after these guys here immediately. Alright, so he's back here. Because I'm not really worried about these at all. And then we're going to get these archers firing at him. If this was a more challenging battle here, then we might want to do this a little differently. Yeah, I'm not too worried about this. And we want to engage them with the the spearmen. We want to engage those horse guys. But you can see that they're coming to protect their archers here. All right, so let's go after them. You can see we're already uh, doing heavy damage to these archers. And have these guys charge them. Have them fire against that unit. Try and avoid firing at anybody who's currently engaged with our own troops. We do have that modifier that will reduce the amount of damage that we do to our own troops. That doesn't mean that we're going to want to to fire at them if we can avoid it. All right, so they're still going after the commander here. I think we're just going to go commander against commander, and we'll send some horse units in to assist them, some other cavalry units. Alright, we're going to have them fire a little bit further away where these guys aren't currently engaged if we can. Should have just selected all those, that would have been quicker. Now, I don't play Total War games very often anymore. Let's go ahead and help out. We want to make sure our commander doesn't get uh, injured or killed. And then we'll lose this battle that should have been a victory. So we'll bring the horse guys in to help out here. And again, chasing these guys down with the infantry is just not very effective. Actually, we're going to select all of these guys here. Have them all fire. Bring our cav to take out these guys here since they're kind of far away. All right, so we're charging behind, going after their current knight. Tearing these guys up with our archers. All our infantry just kind of try and chase down the, the enemy archers. Which, as you can see, they'll eventually catch them, maybe. Yeah, it can be kind of difficult to catch archers with your infantry. So that's why I like to have these cavalry here when you're going to be fighting a lot of archers. They're just super helpful. And it looks like we didn't have to go after the victory points. Uh, their commander's not doing so well anymore uh, now that he's being ganged up on. The archers are coming up to help him. Uh, that'll allow these guys to get into the, the battle as well. And these guys should come over here and help. There is a, an exhaustion mechanic, stamina. Uh, you can look at all the stats here. Attack values, uh, regular versus piercing defense, uh, chance to shock. So cavalry units can shock when they... Uh, they have a higher chance to shock when they do their charge. You got your resilience your movement speed, different formations and stuff that you can use. As you can see, our, our cavalry was in the triangle formation. And just like that, we've slain the enemy leader. Uh, we were almost to the point where we would have defeated all their troops anyways. But it doesn't matter which way you win, because all of it results in the same thing. You win the battle and wipe out their troops completely. I suppose the best option, though, is to, to either kill the leader or uh, take the victory points without having to completely defeat their army, so that way you lose less men if you're just trying to consider casualties. So warfare is a great way for increasing army opinion. Uh, when you win battles, when you win the war, uh, you will get army opinion increases. But overall, uh, it's typically kind of negative for your stability because you'll start getting war exhaustion and that will reduce your stability uh, and that will result in rebels and people being unhappy. Yes, my lord. Alright, so 
We are good on supplies. So this is your army supplies and upkeep. You do have to resupply your men in the cities, or uh, there is a an event that can fire a uh, opportunity where your uh, merchants can supply them instead. Uh, I don't think you can just do that though. It has to, you have to wait for that to fire. So we could go after this location now. It'd probably be the easier one to take. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and lay siege here. The men will not resupply on their own. We would have to do that in the city. I don't know if we're going to have enough troops for this. I think we will. I think we'll just have enough. They'll probably have about 2,000 men here. Oh, they only have 300. That's right, because the, the city just got taken. And so because the city just got taken, the siege defense and resilience and their food are all down. If you guys recall last episode, I said the sieges take a long time. And the reason why that's usually the case is because unlike Total War, you can't just assault a city whenever you want to. You have to wait until the siege defense gets to 50%. And it just so happens that siege defense here for this city, since it was just taken, is already exactly at 50%, 50 of 100. Uh, now that siege defense will change based on uh, what's in the, the province, uh, what they built there, uh, how much they have upgraded uh, the fortifications. And that'll result in you having to siege it longer before you can even attempt an assault on the city. Now luckily we've already got that, so we can do that now and don't have to wait, which we will be doing. And we could lead it, or we could just do a, a simulated one. I think it would take longer. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth loading up. Yeah, I feel like with just 300 dudes, let's just go all in in this case, because this should be a pretty easy one. It's heavily one-sided. Now again, it does take longer in the, the grand scheme of things, since you have to play, let the game play, rather than just going down there. But we don't have to load into the map and then play it and all that stuff. And again, this should be a pretty easy battle. And we gotta wait for this to finish up. That's them preparing for the fight. So we should be able to take this pretty quickly. Uh, then we'll go into their home province where I expect they would have raised another army that we're gonna have to battle. So we'll battle them and then we'll go after this, this location, which I assume at that point we're going to have to go home to resupply our men and all that kind of good stuff. So we've taken their town, again, very easy, simply because the town had just been taken. So that was a nice advantage there. Uh, they don't have any workers, any uh, population for us to uh, refill our troops. It might not be necessary, though, because we didn't really take very many casualties. And our army supplies are also quite high. So you can see that there's disorder here. So one option, the more aggressive uh, option to deal with this problem is to establish order using the knight that's in the city. So marshals can do this here. Uh, so if we attempt to do that, we have a 56% chance of success, but we're not going to do that. I think our best option would be to use the other option, which is to make use of your cleric. And this is where clerics can be incredibly helpful. Uh, you, you can see that we can lift the disorder in one of our towns. Now it is expensive, it's going to cost us uh, 1,050 gold and 220 books, so we can't do it right now. Luckily, there's no population here for them to be rebellious. Everybody's dead. Uh, so no problem with that. Let's go and move our troops out of here. But yeah, we're not going to do the established order. And the Pope is dead. So when the Pope dies, a Cardinal will be uh, selected. And so if that's one of your, uh, which your clerics can become Cardinals, and if that's one of your clerics, that is elected, then you'll have increased relations with the Papal States, and I believe you get some unique options with them as well. Like you can call Crusades and, and that kind of stuff, but I, I only saw that in Developer Diary. I haven't actually made use of that mechanic myself. So I was gonna start raising up that second army, just in case they pull somebody else into this conflict. And you'll notice that we can ransack these locations here. Really no point of doing that, as you can see it's takes time for them to rebuild it. All of these here were ransacked in that previous uh, Welsh conflict, and they're fighting each other. And yeah, it just makes it useless, so if we plan on conquering it, there's no reason really to do that. You'll get some money and stuff, but yeah, why destroy stuff that's gonna be yours? It's really only something you wanna do if you can't win a siege, which sometimes these sieges can be quite difficult. This one here, I think, is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Also, this battle here, I think will be a little bit more difficult than that one we just fought, simply because it's not all archers. They do have some light infantry. All right, so let's go ahead and attack. 
their army. And that's right, we don't want to start raising up any more further troops just yet because we need to deal with this new location. So we need to save our money and uh, we also should be saving our books for that. Yes. Alright, so we're going to have another battle here and this one we'll once again find down on the map. This will be an easy battle. And uh, a little bit closer in numbers here than what we saw in the previous battle. Not much closer, but we still outnumber them. And most importantly, we have a more, more uh, diverse force. They still are mostly archers. The enemy stands here. Now you'll notice that there is no deployment phase as there is in Total War where you get to set your troops up and how you want them to be uh, before the battle starts. So that's not an option, unfortunately. All right, so we won't go as far this time so we can get better in place before they get here. Maybe this is too far as well, I don't know. Because they all are archers. Get our own archers set up back here, maybe like so. And then bring the cabin. And I'll try again to go after their victory points. We'll go off this way with our commander. We do vastly outnumber them as far as like fighting men goes since they are all archers with the exception of this one light infantry unit that they have. Can speed this up a bit as well. So it'll move a little bit faster. And we'll have to see if they end up attacking us here. I would not be surprised if their enemy commander does. All right, so they're charging us right now. So let's go ahead and use our make use of our archers here. Probably not to hit those. Actually, this is what we're gonna do. Hit the flanks with the cav, as we did before. Have the archers come forward and attack these guys. They'll go after them here in a minute. Keep your heads down. All right, so I just wanted to see where their knight was going. We're gonna have them attack there, then attack there. Actually, change that up. He's going here. We want this guy to go here in the middle. Go after those horse units there. They were attempting to charge our archers. Looks like they still will. Let's get them back out of here. All right, we have it sped up. I was wondering why things are going so fast. Let me slow that down a bit. So yeah, I don't play uh, Total War games that much anymore. So this is not really a kind of element that I'm like great at. I typically do okay in these type of battles, these uh, tactical battles. And let's see how we want to move our archers around. I think they're probably still fine doing what they're doing now. I know that we're, we're hitting some of our own troops and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we have these guys, they are strong against cavalry units. You can see that whenever you hover over this, what they're weak against, what they're good against. So like, everybody has, it's like that paper rock uh, scissor system, uh, with the exception of the archers, where you know, the archers are uh, really only good and, and ranged. You know, Cav is, is really good at taking down the archers uh, and charging uh, any kind of melee units from behind, getting that uh, charge attack. Uh, the light spearmen really good against you know any horse units, but bad against infantry. Infantry are good against these type of defensive units, so the spearmen and stuff, uh, but not as good against the cavalry. And they say they're weak against range units. That's because they take more damage from them, but they do fine in in the actual melee combat. So yeah, everything has something has a unit that it does well against, and a unit it doesn't do so good against. So the archers here are coming to engage our cav units. Our uh, our um, uh, character here, our knight. And so we're going to go and take those out real quick so they're not just shooting at us while we're trying to take the points. Still chasing those guys down. And so far it looks like we're doing fine with the exception of uh, these archers kind of getting tore up by them. And yeah, these guys should be all okay. Yeah, everything looks fine out throughout here. Okay, so we'll take these guys out and if the battle's still not won, which I assume by that point it will be, uh, we'll go and start taking their victory points. Still trying to chase these <laughs> archers down, so they have dragged us 
way over here as we attempted to chase them down. Again, melee units just, the air, or the infantry units, I should say, are just not very good at chasing the archers down, which is why we did want to make sure that we had these cavalry units for the battle. Because, yeah, it just doesn't go well otherwise. And then you're kind of stuck using your knights to chase everybody down. So they're dead, and with that we have, or they're fleeing. So they have all retreated, and we have now won the battle. So the question is, do we have enough units at this point in order to do the siege? And I feel like we do not. I, I think we should go ahead and uh, head over here to work in order to get some replacements. I'll show you guys how all that works here in a minute. So we won that battle. Uh, still waiting to get the, the money for over here and the books. I think we'll end up getting that money before we have the books. Peasantry opinion is high, because remember King Henry is still currently working on that for us. Alright, so let's go ahead and speed this up. So he'll probably raise up another army, because unfortunately we have not been capturing his marshal. Often you can capture the marshal, and I think the first marshal we killed, didn't we? And I believe it said we killed him. That's how we won that battle. But yeah, we didn't capture the other guy. So you'll notice that despite the fact that work does not have any barracks, we can replenish the health of all of our units here. So you do not need to have barracks in order to replace the losses. You only need them for building new units. And you'll see how much this is going to take. So the cab unit, because he's not uh, you know, fully damaged, is only going to take one population. Uh, normally, remember, building these took two. And you'll see that with this guy, because he is so heavily damaged, beyond 50%, he will need the full two population in order to restore his losses. Now you can also restore losses here at the Replenish Army. And this is something I didn't show. We didn't purchase any equipment for our, our Marshal. We should have done that. Although it does cost money we might not have had at the time. Uh, so you can do it through here, but then you're not picking who you're restoring the losses to. So for instance, we want to make sure we get the, these guys healed up. Right so that'll take two of the population. We still have three left. Let's restore the losses to this light infantry wow. unit. And then this, this bowman's pretty damaged. And we'll do him. And then it's basically just one light spearman that we weren't able to restore. And then this guy's a little bit injured, but not too bad. And so now we're back up to 2780 here. So let's go ahead and go over to Nottingham. And then I'll show those other two mechanics there. And this is all costing us that money in the levies. So the levies kind of control how long you're going to be able to fight for. So getting more levies built up, uh, you know that number in parentheses there, will allow you to stay in the warfare longer and take the losses and be able to replace those. Uh, so let's go to restore them and them. Could have done that through here. These are the army supplies. Uh, so we do have to keep them supplied. You go to the cities and you just click on this and it resupplies them. Uh, it takes that from the city's food and it does cost money. So we're going to go ahead and uh, restock, and then I wanted to show you guys the equipment. Uh, so here you have a variety of different types of equipment that you can purchase. Now in order to get all four slots, you do need to get uh, a certain skill uh, for your marshal, which we do not have, logistics. Uh, otherwise you can just get the two. So our options here are one additional troops. That increases the number of troops in each one of your squads. So results in you have a much larger army. However, it does have the cost of extra food. Uh, you have to maintain them with a, a higher food upkeep. Uh, so that'll increase them by 15%. You see we do not have the levies available to do that. The other option we have here is supply wagons. This is pretty helpful because it gives you more army supplies. Now a battle where you're fighting so close to home, it's not really that big of a deal, uh, particularly in a small conflict like this, to just go back and get supplies if you need it. Uh, we came over here and resupplied well before we needed to. But that can be pretty useful in uh, bigger battles that are farther from, from home. Uh, battering ram, that's pretty helpful. The war machine created to take down castle gates. Uh, these are all siege engines, which we cannot build right now because we don't have the siege workshops. Yeah, we could get the supply wagons if we wanted to, but it's not really necessary, so we don't need to spend the money. Uh, but this one would have been helpful if we had done it before the war. Uh, but now it's it's not really an option. Because we don't have the levies for it. So let's go to march back into their territory to do the final siege. Probably another battle as well, I our assume. King has died. And our king has died during the war. Okay, so Conan is now the king. Alright, so this ends our non-aggression pact with France. The non-aggression pacts only last for the life of your king. 
and also ends our royal ties with Germany. I didn't realize we had royal ties with them. And nobility opinion decline has been avoided due to that one trait that we had. All right, excellent. Uh, so yeah, you normally, when your king dies, the noble opinion will drop. Uh, but that 15% chance actually uh, it played into our favor this time. Remember, that is with the leadership. So we got lucky there. Uh, leadership is now level 3 as well. So that's going to increase his army morale by 3. Uh, archery is also now level 3. And now it would be wise for us to get the rest of his uh, skills since they'll be level 3. However, we already have something we want to invest books into, so we're going to have to wait on that, guys. All right, so we have a new king. Uh, we really need to arrange a marriage for him now. It's going to be pretty important that we do this. But again, I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think we've improved opinion with Genoa at all yet. So he has not been successful here. And so unfortunately, they're probably not going to accept this offer. We can try. But yeah, you can see that they're saying no. We just don't have the influence, guys. I mean, we have a little bit more influence with Denmark. So we could try here again, but I don't think that's going to be enough. We just need to increase either our influence or opinion with these countries. So yeah, none of these are, are going to be effective. All right, so that means that our royal family has changed. We no longer have anybody here because we don't have any children or a spouse. And our brothers are now over here in the uh, important relatives. And so we can still appoint them up here once they become available. So he is still over here. That means we do not have anybody in London. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and move him over there. I think that's probably the better location since we constructed this. So we want to get those... Uh, those nice resources there. So let's go and put the king over there. That'll take time for him to get there, of course. And then I'm hesitant to hire anybody else since we have our brothers that I'd like to, to appoint. Yeah, I think we'll just wait to appoint anybody else here, guys. And of course, he can sure serve as a, a marshal as well, which is what he's currently doing. Now, that does mean... Hmm. We're not currently improving relations here at all. Now you can see that because of the recently deceased king, stability is now dropped. Yes, my lord. Is that so unfortunate that happened right during this war? Uh, let's go and siege their city. I'm not seeing any other troops out here, guys. So we'll siege your last city. And uh, this time, it's going to be a wait. So you can see they have more similar numbers here than what we saw over here. And they have the full siege defense of 230. So we're going to have to get that down to 115 in order to actually assault their town. Now you can also starve them out. That's an option. It takes forever. But you can do it. So yeah, this is going to take a long time, guys. Now you'll see that the, the army manpower will slowly uh, decrease. So this will not be the numbers that we end up fighting with here. But again, it does take a long time. Oh, Flanders was destroyed by France. Okay. So France is slowly conquering their neighbors. And I believe we do now have what we need up here to go ahead and adopt the population in Cardiff. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a 52% chance of success, so not all that good, honestly. Uh, we could have and we should have uh, increased his success chance before we did that, but that would have cost books that we didn't really have at the moment. Uh, relations was improved with Genoa. We can take a look every time we do that if they'll accept it. But I don't think that'll be enough. That's not a, a huge increase there, guys. But we'll keep on asking. And you can see they still declined. I thought that would be the case. But felt like it was worth asking them. All right, so once we get new books, we want to invest that into our king. I suppose we could also invest it into Baron John because we haven't fully gotten the Siegecraft yet. So we could get the level 3 if we wanted to save up a bit more. And we'll just say, let me think about that. So that might be wise as well. Uh, help us do a little bit better. And so you can see, yeah, it's going to take quite some time. We've only depleted by 230 and we've got it on the, the full speed 4 at the moment. We actually have some money to spend. So let's go back to Winchester 
and we can see what upgrades we can now get with the woodworking. Uh, so we have the sawmills, which will give us more hammers and another 5% uh, cheaper building cost. And that will produce a new trade good, timber. And that will give us 10% production. This is the kingdom effect. And plus 20% equipment, siege equipment cost reduction. Getting siege equipment would have been helpful uh, and something we were definitely going to want to do. We don't have it yet in our barracks, but we're going to want to get that. And then we also have this option, the kilns, which will give us two commerce. And uh, you can see that we now actually are using too much commerce because remember we had our king that was boosting it. And so yeah, we actually don't have that much commerce anymore. And so this is the other option to get charcoal, which give us plus five income and also gives a 10% production. So that's an option as well. So let's go with, I think we're gonna do the sawmills. We had to have the 5% the cheaper building costs. All right, excellent. So we'll go ahead and start working on that. Invest a little bit of our money in it. And remember, we're saving up the, the books to upgrade Baron John, get his last upgrade. Our last uh, primary skill upgrade, I should say. I must have sinned. And unfortunately, our cleric did fail here. So that's a real shame. It means we're going to have to do it again. And this is something I've been waiting to, to show here is when we get rebellious population. So you'll notice that it still says zero of six. We actually do have one population there, but they're rebellious. That means we can't use them. And so let's say you have three rebellious population. That means of the six, the highest you can get is three because the other three are rebellious. And those population can rise up in a rebellion, uh, which will result in them becoming a, a unit on the map that will start like, you know, attacking your stuff and you'll have to fight them. And it can result in them even taking over if they win a siege, you know, taking over your, your territory from you. So we've got a cleric opportunity. Um, we're not gonna do this right now because we want to, to do this choice again here to adopt a population. So let's go ahead and do that again. It's a real shame because they're saving up the books for something else, but this does need to be done. Uh, until we integrate them, they will not be a full part of our kingdom. And we're no longer a great power. So we did lose our great power status, unfortunately. Uh, we did complete those sawmills. Excellent. But again, we need to save this money up. So we'll just keep on working on this siege. So we can get that siege defense down, which it's getting there, guys. Right, you can see how long this takes, and thus it greatly prolongs the overall conflict, and, and that's how it results in other countries always getting involved here. So again, we're going to keep on contacting them, even though I know that they're going to decline. Probably. Because I don't think the opinion is anywhere near high enough, but they are sympathetic now, so maybe. No. But yeah, we'll keep on trying since that's what we have our diplomat working on. Just trying to get that opinion improved. Uh, we no longer have the non-aggression pact with France. That's something we should actually see if they're willing to uh, reestablish. And yes, looks like we do now have another non-aggression pact with France and that's gonna change opinion with all these countries that either like or dislike France. So once again, for the life of this king, Conan, we are protected against war with France. Though I suppose I should say for the life of King Louis VI, since I assume he'll die first. Now there's no ages as you guys have seen, instead it's you know just this broad category. Uh, so you don't really know how old anybody is. And I'm not entirely sure how it works. Oh, we did uh, adopt the population here. So you can see, and they no longer have the stripes there. But that doesn't change the fact that they're still quite rebellious. We have a disloyal population here. Uh, there's now two rebellious population. We still have the cultural tension and kingdom stability is also decreasing it. So this is still a, a location that uh, has a lot of issues. Now you notice that because this is the only place they had, they did already build in all four of the building slots here. Uh, they got in the, the barracks. They've gotten some flax uh, farming here. And that does not produce any goods, it just gives the, the two commerce and the two happiness. They have some housing, increasing their population there. Also increases population growth. 
and they had the market square. But of course, we're not getting any of these benefits because we don't have uh, anybody assigned here. So we need another governor. So really, we're just waiting for our brothers to come of age here. So one thing you'll notice is that the, the king and his royal family seems to age much quicker than the rest of your knights. Obviously, it's not very accurate. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But what I've noticed... And it looks like we've had a Loyalist Rebellion. Okay, well that's interesting. So that's over here in Calais. In Calais. Uh, so basically, what happened here is they had a, a rebellion. And because of the different culture here, when they rebelled, it was English rebels. Uh, because there's a lot of English people here. Uh, so they, if they win this, which they won't, but if they did win it and they took over Calais, then they could then grant it to us. And France would have a claim on that location. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. I do expect they'll likely be defeated. Yeah, we'll keep our eye on it. Uh, we do have some money. So let me just take a look how much this is going to cost to upgrade his final skill. It's going to be 500, so we just want to make sure we're not spending that. So one thing I was thinking about getting is the... Well, you know what? Let's keep doing these upgrades here. Yeah, we'll keep doing these upgrades. Uh, we have a new option now that we got the sawmills. We can get these two. Uh, this will produce uh, furniture, and this will produce barrels. And just hover over that and see what that does. It's helpful. But I think we're going to go ahead and do this one instead to get the uh, charcoal. So yeah, let's go and get that. We still got a little bit of money left, but remember, we need to save that money for the upgrade. So we'll have 800 here. Yeah, we're just going to keep on saving the money for now. Just make sure we're able to do this. And while we are losing men here, they are in fact losing much more men. It's not what you typically see in strategy games. Usually the uh, siege is more costly for the actual besiegers. And yeah, we'll just say let me think here. We don't need to do that right now. Yeah, their numbers are reducing much more rapidly than ours are. And we're now at 115. We just got there. So now we can go ahead and assault the castle. Uh, as far as the chances of winning is heavily one-sided, uh, we can go in and fight it out. Though I find that I, I do seem to take more casualties when I fight it out than when the AI does it for us. That's just what I noticed. But I do want to show you guys the siege battles. Uh, unfortunately, though, we probably won't be able to do that in today's episode because yeah, we just don't have enough time uh, still left over here. And we should also upgrade his siegecraft too now that we've got those books. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So now he's up to siegecraft three. Yeah, we can we can do the battle. Uh, even though again, I do find it a little bit more costly just because assaulting the walls, the uh, towers. You know, they shoot arrows like in in uh, the Total War games. The towers do shoot, shoot arrows at you, and if they have any archers, which they do, those are going to do pretty heavy damage, and they're protected from your cavalry since you have to take over the gates, as you do in the Total War games. You have to take over the gates and get through the walls, uh, which you can do those uh, by attacking the gates, which is any unit. Any unit can be assigned to like bash the gates down. Uh, you don't actually need a, uh, a ram, though it is much quicker with a ram. So you can do that. Yeah, the bowman's just going to sit, sit behind the wall and, and shoot at your guys. And so I just noticed that they, they seem to take heavier casualties whenever I do this, uh, actually fight the battle, than when I just simulate it. Uh, so maybe it's just me, uh, but that's that's the way it appears, uh, just because of the archers and the towers. But yeah, we'll, we'll do this battle in the next episode, guys. So there is one thing I wanted to do before we end today's episode, and that is to build the herb gardening in York. So this is the only location we have in our country right now that will prov provide the herbs and spices. And so we're going to go ahead and get it here. It's pretty cheap. So that's going to get us the three gold, two from just the herb garden and one from having a crop farm here. We only have one here. It's one per crop farm. And then the 10% population growth. And then we'll be able to produce a bunch of these goods here once we get the upgrades. So a lot of goods available in this. Uh, so we want to go ahead and get that. And again, it's, it's really cheap. So let's go ahead and build it. All right, so that's probably all we're going to be able to do for right now. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. We got a new king, King Conan, who's uh, a martial king. Uh, very good martial king, all up to level 5 there. Uh, we do need to start getting his uh, getting his skills. 
since remember those will be uh, put at level three immediately. So we do want to start uh, upgrading our king now, now that we've gotten uh, Baron John, who's the one that's actually leading our troops right now. Now that we got him uh, fully upgraded with the, the three primary skills, rather than working with his secondary skills, it makes more sense to start working on our, our own king, who would be better at leading troops. And we can even take all the troops that Baron John has and give them to our king if we so desired. Now, one thing I have not mentioned when it comes to troops, I guess we'd want to look at our own guy here is that they do have experience. You see rank here, a novice unit. Uh, so that is important. Uh, they do get better as they fight. They get more experience, which grants bonuses to attack, defense, stamina, siege strength, and resilience. So yeah, this is important. You know, your actual uh, units that you have, uh, they'll get experience as they fight, so you just don't want to get rid of them. And you can transfer, you know, the troops from, you know, maybe a, a really old uh, commander. I mean, that's not the case in Baron John. But maybe you got a knight who's really old. You could take his troops and then transfer them over to uh, one of your other guys that's maybe a bit younger. So if we want to use uh, King Conan as our primary commander, then maybe we want to take John's troops and give those to him. Uh, obviously, that'll be uh, when the war ends, because uh, right now we don't need to do that. Uh, we'll just be doing the siege here, and then then it'll be over. We would have wiped them out, and Wells will be ours. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.